Yo, hey guys, Small Mouth Crush. I wanted to make a video talking about my brand new Lund aluminum boat, Lund Alaskan. So I bought an aluminum boat for a variety of different reasons. We're gonna break all that down. I'm gonna show you the boat, show you how I have it rigged up, and we'll go through the whole rig itself. That's all coming up. For those that are new to my channel, I do a lot of videos related to bass fishing. So I live in upstate New York and I guide full time out here on the St. Lawrence River, Lake Ontario, mostly for bass, specifically trophy smallmouth bass. And so of course I have a 21 foot fiberglass camus that I use uh, for bass fishing, for guiding. But now that I'm up here full time, I really want to be able to experience all the different outdoor activities and a lot of things I used to do when I lived back in Wisconsin. Things like duck hunting, things like trolling for salmon and trout, trolling for walleyes. Those are things that I used to do, but over the last six, seven, eight years, I really didn't have the opportunity to do that. I was kind of confined to a fiberglass bass boat, which is great, when you're out there bass fishing, but it really limits the amount of fishing and different activities that you can do. So this really started, my buddy Kent, I would say this is about two falls ago, uh, he had a Lund aluminum boat and we went out in it salmon fishing and I had a blast, we had a great time. It was really a tool to get us to an area where we could jump out with our waders and do some fishing and so it really and so ever since that experience, I realized, man, I could really use an aluminum boat. And I grew up in aluminum boats. So that was a lot of my fishing uh, experience was in aluminum boats. My first real aluminum boat was a Lund. Now it was probably like a 1972, one of those bright red Lunds that my dad refurbished and we put a front casting deck on it and gutted it all out. And it was great, you know, at the time it had a 50 horse, old mercury on it. I knew I was going to get pretty aggressive with this boat, meaning I wanted to take it in areas where there was gonna be some, some rocks, right? Shallow water, it's gonna get beat up. And so for the longest time, I was searching for a used boat because I know myself, if I get a brand new boat, I'm probably gonna really baby it just like I do all my stuff. And turns out this is a brand new boat. However, uh, the reason behind it is the market out there for used Lunds, and that's that's the uh, the brand I decided to go with. Obviously, they're they're well known, well built, great boats. It was just almost impossible to find a used Lund Alaskan out there. It turns out the same dealer that I get my Camus from also is a Lund dealer. So Thayer's Marine, they're located in Connecticut. They're a great dealer. They sell a lot of boats. They have a lot of different brands. And Richie over there uh, mentioned to me, hey, you know, we, we offer Lunds. Why don't we uh, get you in a Lund? And so I'm like, okay, that makes sense. Uh, since I can't find one that seems to make sense right now, let's put an order in. So I put an order in. It took about six months to get this boat once I put the initial order in. So there is a little bit of a waiting list if you can't find the exact model that you want at a dealer right now. Uh, you would have to place an order and that could have changed a little bit as we're filming here. Uh, we're in January right now. Maybe you can get it sooner. Maybe it could be ready for you by the springtime here. But I had to wait. I didn't get this boat until August. All right, today I'm heading to Thayer's. Thayer's Marine in Connecticut. That's where I got my Camus. They sell all kinds of boats over there. In fact, they also sell Lunds. I'm actually picking up my aluminum boat today. I'm a little excited. This is gonna be a fun little toy. All right, we got Richie here, man. What do you think? This thing turned out amazing. Yes, it's a really cool boat. It was a hell of a project. It was one of the most intense things we have ever rigged. Uh, especially for an Alaskan to be able to find a spot to stick everything that Travis has put in this thing. We had to modify compartments, we had to build special brackets. I mean, this thing is wild. You're gonna catch a lot of fish out of this, hopefully. <laughs> so I didn't really know until this early spring 
that you even carry one. I mean, yes. you carry all kinds of different boats. Obviously, we get our bass boats from you. Yep. Canis, you carry a bunch of different brands. Talk about that a little bit. So we're obviously primarily known for our bass boats, but we have been a Lund dealer since 2015. We're one of the largest Lund dealers actually in the country. Generally, we're in there. We finish in their top 25 to top 50, which doesn't sound like much, but there's a lot more aluminum dealers than there are bass boat dealers. Uh, and it's a great line. We love them. We have a showroom full of them right now. Generally, we have 25 to 30 in stock at any time. Uh, we do get a couple of used ones that come across, although they are very hard to find. Yeah. Uh, so if you guys want to come down and check them out, you're more than welcome to in any kind of weather. They are all inside. Awesome, awesome. Well, I can't wait to uh, show you guys this fully rigged. We're going to tear apart this whole boat and walk you through it once we get it back to the house. And uh, it's going to be a it's going to be a fun little toy. I appreciate it. Anytime, Travis. Thank you. Awesome. Now, because I I have this lund, I'm also going to be able to go out and do a lot of offshore fishing, you know, way out on Lake Ontario. I'll be able to troll for walleyes and get back into trolling, actually, for salmon and trout on Lake Ontario. Not only that, it serves as a great backup boat. If my bass boat ever goes down, I certainly can catch some bass out of this boat and still guide and not have to uh, cancel those trips if something ever was to happen, which it certainly does when you fish as much as I do and, and use my boats. Most, most of the time on my fiberglass boat, on my bass boat, I put about 220 hours a year on that, on that motor guiding. So I'm on the water quite a bit. And so this is going to be a great backup boat for me. But I also used to hunt a lot of waterfowl and specifically a lot of divers and sea ducks offshore. And the Great Lakes is an amazing region to be able to do that. And I was able to experience a, a lot of waterfowl hunting out of this boat. And I'm gonna show you some past clips and videos and, and perhaps some pictures. I don't have a whole lot of the setup. So the blind system, uh, this is going to be a fairly long video. I'm going to try to make it as entertaining and educational as possible for you. Uh, I hope I don't get too long winded and I hope you guys enjoy this uh, breakdown of the Lund Alaskan. So recently I transformed this from a duck hunting rig back to a fishing rig. And my number one issue that I had this fall duck hunting out of this boat was it literally got trashed. It got trashed from mud from vegetation, uh, it, was, it was a total, total disaster. And one of the neat things about this boat is the, the flooring in it. It's super easy to keep clean. All I did at the end of the season was I took a power washer and washed everything down. And it really came out good. Uh, I was surprised compared to what it looked like during duck season. I had, you know, dozens and dozens of decoys in here obviously you know duck blood and everything else everywhere mud from waders jumping in and out but I was able to carry all these decoys I was able to hunt with a number of guys in this boat there's a lot of room in here and I felt safe we did a lot of offshore hunting so for sea ducks those would be your scoter uh, long tails formerly known as old squaws and as well as divers. So we did a lot of gunning out of here and it was a great boat. We, I was out in some pretty big waves. I was very happy with the performance of the boat. It is a little bit uh, coming from a fiberglass boat. This boat does take on a little bit of water, right? When you're going through waves, I don't think there's anything you can do about it. Uh, the main thing I found is just finding the right miles per hour, you know, the setting uh, on, on your motor as far as heading out there. I couldn't open it up. So this is, has this has a Mercury uh, four-stroke. It's got a 150. It's a 150 tiller. So this is the highest maximum horsepower that you can have on this boat. And I decided to go with that because if I'm going to get a boat and do things right, I'm going to do it right. Um, I, I think you can get by with a, a smaller motor, but I went with the 150. And so on a calm day, I can do about 43, 44 miles an hour with this 150. Most of the time I'm doing 15 to 20 miles an hour, especially in those big waves. But we do get a little bit of water in here, right? So, so if you do have a tiller like this and you're gonna be in three foot waves trying to get out to your fishing spot, maybe set up on a troll or whatever the case may be, uh, you're gonna have to bring, bring your rain gear. That's, it's a total different ride than the fiberglass boat. I, pr I promise you that. It, uh, 
it is a little wet. That was the only downfall. I ex expected that. And again, that's only when you're out in that real rough stuff and you get some of that spray in here. You know, it's it's a it can be a wet riding boat. So that's the only concern I had really going into the fall. Obviously, colder temperatures, freezing freezing water, freezing weather, things like that. Uh, you got to be careful. So you have to be smart about it. A lot of times we just took our time getting out there. We just went a little bit slower, and then you can certainly stay dry because the last thing you want to do is get soaked and then never everything freeze up in here. But really cleaning this whole mess up with the, with a with the pressure washer and really going through it all, it took a couple hours. I'm not gonna lie, but I just kept moving the dirt, moving, going in the compartments, getting everything flushed out of here, and uh, it looks great. It almost looks like the day the day I bought it. So now we're fully rigged for you know basically open water. We're gonna head up to the bow here, and I'm gonna walk you through everything I have going up there, and uh, we'll finish up here at the back of the boat. All right, so we're up at the bow here. I went with the Minn Kota Tarova, and this is the longest shaft that you can get. I think it's better to have the longest shaft, especially in the types of water and places that I fish. So I wanted to go with the longer shaft. Of course, I have a ram mount here, and there's a track system in these boats. So it allows me to add different uh, devices here to help me be more efficient on the water. And so we have this trolling motor locked in with a ram mount, which I highly suggest. Um, you see here, this is kind of an open area to the bow. I think there's some aftermarket stuff that I can purchase to, to cover this up, but nothing really falls out of here. Um, I just have a few things in here. Believe it or not, I got a, a bilge pump, hand pump in this bag. And the reason is because if I go in Canadian waters, it's actually a requirement, believe it or not. You have to have some sort of hand pump on your vessel. But I keep the uh, life jacket in here. And then this is also where the foot pedal for my trolling motor will, will sit. And I also have the remote control for that. Okay, up here, this is a great little platform. Uh, we got your, your navigational lights if you want to put in here. I guess that's the puck for the uh, this trolling motor, uh, Southern Light makes an LED spotlight. This is an awesome spotlight, uh, especially when you're running out in the uh, early mornings or coming in late at night. It's just a nice little spotlight. It really shines and brights, brightens up everything in front of you. It's like having a headlight. Uh, running a Garmin 126 at the bow. I do have my live scope. You guys uh, if you watch my previous bass fishing videos. You know I love technology and love love electronics. So. I got this mount here. Um, this mount was made by Arc Labs, I believe. I, I actually can use this pole for ice fishing as well, but we have their little keeper, their holder here that runs on the track system. So that holds this in place when I'm running out there. And then this actually, this pole fits into here and this ram mount holds it in place. So I can just basically use my hand and move this transducer around uh, to help me find fish and structure that way. Totally basic setup here at the bow compared to my Camus bass boat. I run two Garmin's and then I run a uh, Hummingbird 360 at the bow. So very basic, but I think I'm, I'm happy with this setup. I can put a butt seat here. I don't have it in right now. Uh, I guess we'll go over to chairs, the seating. We have one, two, three, four. So I can put four chairs in here and the butt seat, or I actually have five chairs. But to be honest with you, I mean, you can literally just sit right here and hold on to the side. You can run, run people on both sides. I also have this big angle cooler right here, and there's a lot of reasons for this cooler, but this acts as another seat, really. It's, a, it's really a great setup. A lot of room in here, as you can see. You can move around. Uh, we got our big net up here. Now something to keep in mind with these compartments. Again, they're not like my bass boat compartments. They will get wet, okay? Moisture will find its way in. Spray from the waves, rain will find its way in. That's one downfall of this. Uh, it, they're definitely not dry compartments. Don't right. expect your stuff to be able to stay dry if you're taking out in some pretty harsh conditions. We start with the front compartment here. Very basic, right? 
nothing too crazy. It's not like they latch in place. They just have a little button you pull up and plenty of room in here to put things, right? I don't know exactly what I'm going to be using this front storage for, but I'm glad to have it. I know this is where I'm keeping all my my planer boards. So I just put a little crate in here and then I have my planer boards for trolling uh, in this compartment. I just have a big anchor. This is a Richter 25 pound anchor. It's got the chain. It has 250 feet of rope. And if you ever get in a situation where you need to anchor up, this is the correct setup that you want. I don't care what kind of boat you have. Uh, the Richter anchor with the chain and the long rope is, uh, will be able to hold you in those big waves. During duck season, when I'm, when I'm hunting offshore, I'll actually take the planter boards off like I did this past fall. And I have another 25 pound Richter anchor in here as well. So during, during waterfall season, there's two anchors in here because we do set up our decoys offshore and hunt out in the open water out of this boat. Okay, this is actually the live well. It's very basic, right? There's no recirculate pump. At least I don't believe there is. It's kind of just a fill and, and then drains out the side. So nothing fancy. It's a pretty big live well. We had a bunch of walleyes in here already this, uh, this past late summer. It's got a little dip net or whatever. But for what it is, it's a decent, decent live well for sure. Okay, this compartment, I believe half of it is, yep. So half of it's gonna be your, your, I guess that's a pump for my steering on the tiller. So we had to put this in here. Uh, here I just have some fenders, boat fenders, and I have a my emergency bag in here as well. This is gonna be your, just your basic, we need an oar, we need flares fire extinguisher, things like that. So that's what goes in that compartment there. And then over here, this is where I stored my batteries. So I run two lithium 36 volt batteries in here, uh, designated for my, my battery. So I really can't use that for storage either. And then you have one more storage right down here. Not very big. And again, it, it will get wet, right? So I'm not quite sure what we're going to use that for, but it's nice to have. And we'll go through the sides here in a second. Uh, but back here then, we also have one more storage unit. And that goes quite a ways back there. So I can fit some stuff in there for sure. And we actually have to customize the back. Richie over at Thayer's actually redesigned this. They had to cut some things and the reason was because it allows me to fit these batteries in here. I think previously to this setup it was very flush but you can see this battery here. I have a, a lithium 12 volt ba battery for the um, the starting battery and all my electronics and stuff like that and so that's located back in there and this little Customization allows me to just put that back and it, and it conceals all that down in there. We go over here. These uh, rod lockers basically open up and I can fit all my trolling rods on here. I've also put a lot of 3700 style tackle boxes on this side. If we go over to this side here, it's the same thing. So you got your, your storage. Ooh. So you got your storage on this side too. This here is all the fuses for the southern light. Obviously, there's not a lot of dry storage in here. I feel like there's a lot of room though for rods, right? So so I can put my rods in here, and if they'll fit a pile of rods. A lot of times I use rod socks when I do put them in here. And I'll show you like up here on the ceiling, I have all my uh, trolling rods for salmon and trout up there. So when the time comes, all those rods will go in the boat. We've got a few more up here as well. And then this rack right down here, those are all my uh, walleye trolling rods uh, down there. So this works out great. And then if we do do some steelhead fishing and stuff like that, with these longer 
you know, 10, 11, 12 foot rods, I'm able to either break those down or you can actually, I put these straps in here to hold some rods on top of this as well, which works out great. All right, the cooler, I'll just open this up. It's really nice in a boat like this to have a cooler. And it's kind of just the, uh, the essential. So this is kind of like my designated dry box. So anything that you have that you really do not want to get wet, I, I'll throw in here uh, during the open water season. I've got a bunch of towels here. I got a, a scrub brush. I actually have a small little pressure washer that runs on a battery that sucks water up from the lake. And that's what I use to wash down the floor here. So if we catch a couple walleyes and there's some fish juice and blood, I'll just take that pressure washer and uh, squirt it down. I'm going to try to put links in the description here in this video of some of the stuff I'm talking about if you're interested in taking a look at it. Got the cutting board in here. This is more so when I'm dealing with um, cutting up skein and stuff for salmon fishing. So that just is in there. Uh, just a little medical box with bandages and things like that. Got my fishing licenses in here. Uh, that's just another, that's just a device for for trolling. Got some rubber gloves, got your remote, fillet knife, things like that. And so there's plenty, plenty room in here to put some more stuff in to keep it dry. But, you know, I'd throw my cell phone and wallet and whatever in this cooler. And I just know it's not going to get wet then. I'm do I am running a Canon Magnum 5 uh, downrigger. So I got two downriggers on here. Got the downrigger ball holder. And these plug in right there. This, I guess, is a little ladder if you need to use it to get in and out. Uh, these are just cup holders that, that I bought. Uh, Brocraft makes these. Look at my Garmin unit. This thing here is designed to, uh, this is a fish hawk. This fish hawk here just attaches to your downrigger. Let you know what your speed and temperature and stuff is uh, when you're running your downrigger balls. So I also have these Canon rod holders, which are great for trolling. Sure, you're familiar with these. They adjust, move around, whatever direction you need. And then we have these Millennium Marine. I guess these are called rod trees. Rod trees, right? I don't know the technical term, but we can set those on the track system and uh, run our planer boards and things like that with those. Oh yes, yeah, so I was talking about the control panel here. So the control panel, that gives me my power, nav lights, there's a light up front, as well as a southern light, and then we also have uh, interior lights here that we can turn on. And I have three bilge pumps in here, uh, just in case, right? I like to go a little overboard on, on the safety side because we do fish some big waters. So there's a bilge pump hooked up on that as well. And you can see those down here. There's two of them right there. I have no idea. I guess the other one's somewhere in the back. You see here we also are running a power pole charge system. This is what I run on my bass boats as well. So this is going to power all my batteries. I can look them up on my phone, see how they're charging. I honestly never worry about my batteries now that I have the power pole charge. If this is something that you're looking at doing for your boat, I highly suggest it. It's very, very simple and uh, keeps my batteries powered at all times. Trailer, pretty basic. I'm not sure what... I got the, the bunks, not the rollers on that. This is those, those lights that come with it, but this light here is way, way brighter. Like I said, I, I love having that thing, so it's a big boat, there's no doubt about it. 20 footer, spare tire of course, single axle. And so back here, uh, basically I have an aluminum prop. I also have a stainless steel prop that I switched out. I've just been going up in the uh, tributaries for steelhead and as well as waterfall hunting. And I also take, I've, I've also 
de la puddle duck hunting out of here so I get back in the marshes with this. I'll get up in some real shallow water that uh, the boat draft's pretty nice to get back there but I definitely don't want to put my stainless steel prop so I it comes with the aluminum I believe and so I ordered a backup as well and I'll run that backup when I'm running the big water in the summer and I'm not worried about hitting things. It does run better with the stainless with the stainless steel prop. Over here we have our transducer. So I just have the one transducer. So side image, 2D, down image, all that for the Garmin. And then this just tells me my speed uh, that's hooked up to that fish hawk when I'm trolling. We also have lights on the back. The southern light package here. And that is basically the full setup of this Lund Alaskan. So there you go, there's a breakdown of that Lund. A great boat for a lot of different applications from salmon and trout, walleye, and waterfall hunting. I got two different blinds, so I have a blind when I'm puddle duck hunting. I'm gonna share some, some footage of that. Maybe I, I think I might have some video of us actually building that blind. So for, for the guys that are looking to use this boat for duck hunting as well, I went with one of them Avery pop-up lines that are customizable. I think that's the brand. When I got it, it arrived in thousands of parts. It was extremely complex to put together. It was not user-friendly at all. And it was just a nightmare. We, we tried to put it on this boat. We tried for about half a day trying to figure out how to make it work. Just wasn't going to work. So. I utilize those Canon rod holders and some pipe and we kind of customize our own duck hunting blind which which worked out way better and they also have just a, a gray tarp well multiple gray tarps that I'll use uh, when I'm when I'm hunting offshore with this boat as well and so I'm super excited to kind of get back to my roots, right? I, I experienced a little bit of the duck hunting, something I haven't done in years. And of course, just being able to go out and as much as I love bass fishing, it's fun to catch a lot of different species of fish. And there's things you just can't do with bass fishing. The only struggle I'm having right now is the salmon and trout, the offshore trolling. Man, it's been years since, since we did it, but I fished a lot of different ports up and down Lake Michigan on the Wisconsin side growing up. And so it's, it's been a challenge. I got all the gear. I'm, I'm watching YouTube videos and trying to, I guess, re-educate myself on that. Uh, the troll inside, I'll just kind of go through a few things with you guys. So I'm excited. We're, we're, we got our thunder sticks ready. We got our husky jerks. We got our bandits. I mean, we got a bunch of crank. I got boxes and boxes here of... Uh, crankbaits and getting back into uh, trolling for walleye. I was able to do a little bit of that this past summer. Man, it's a great walleye bite out here. And so because we have this new Lund, I'm able to ex actually expand my guide service. So if you are watching this and you're interested in coming up to the Thousand Islands region in the future, of course, you can always book a trip with me for bass fishing. We do that really April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November. So six, seven months out of the year we're able to get out there and catch some of those trophy smallmouth that live up here. But I'm also going to be opening up my guide service for this season and doing a lot of the steelhead salmon fishing in the tributaries. Not on the lake yet. I'm not ready for that. Uh, we're, we're probably going to wait a few years if I even decide to do that. Uh, but we do offer walleye trips as well. And then, of course, early season brown trout trolling. Some of the best brown trout fishing anywhere is right here on the eastern basin of Lake Ontario. So if you're interested in booking a trip with me, you can go to my website, smallmouthcrush.com. All the information's there. We're gonna run those spring brown trout fishing uh, March, April, May, and into early June, believe it or not. We're gonna be able to, uh, to catch some of those fish. And then we'll also do some multi-species trips as well. And of course, duck hunting. If you guys are interested in coming out here doing some sea duck hunting, I'm going to be doing that really late November and into early December. That seems to be when the birds really came down here. So we have about a two to three week window. Unfortunately, our season closes in this zone a little earlier than I would hope. 
but it doesn't make sense for me to really guide for puddle ducks and, 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 and those types of birds at this time just because I really haven't found a whole lot of good areas where I need to take the boat. I've been doing that more out of my kayak, but we'll definitely be doing the sea duck hunts uh, for next, uh, next season if you're interested in that. So listen, if you're interested in ordering a Lund and you're from the Northeast or you know within a five, six, seven hour drive, I would encourage you to get a hold of Richie over at Thayer's Marine. Let him know Travis sent you. And whether you go with the, with the Lund Alaskan, I mean, they got a lot of different Lund boats. They got a lot of boats there, right? They got Bass Cats, they got Camuses, they got anything and everything, Rangers, whatever you can imagine, they have over at Thayer's Marine. That's where I suggest you go if you're looking at purchasing a new boat or they have a huge selection of used boats as well. They just didn't have a Lund Alaskan. That's why I had to order that sucker new. But I'm glad I did. I'm going to still baby it, but I'm still going to take it into some sketchy areas. But, man, it's going to definitely get the job done for me. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe. Please subscribe if you found this video helpful. Leave any comments below what you think. And as always, until next time, we'll see you guys on the water.